to Tori's third challenge, I'm making shorts, I am making long pants. I am using the pattern that I made off the original pants that I'm mimicking. I have folded this in fours. Um, because these are pajama pants, I'm not worrying about uh, the front fit and the back fit. It's a simple project for her, so they will be mirror image. Um, it is what it is. So I'm just pinning this down. Um, I have been known to not pin it down, just depending. I've no, been known to uh, not. Um, what do you call it? Just cut around it, you know. Make sure that your bubbles are out of it. Got one of our bubble here, and I'm just working it out. It's on one of the other things. So I've got four pieces here, and I am being careful because I want these lines to run long way. The one thing that people don't pay attention to a whole lot sometimes is the um pattern that's on the material. Still fighting with that little it's like in the same layer. So this is just I'm gonna take my fingernails and kind of stretch it out. Make sure that each layer is flat. Um, just because you don't want it gathering where it's not supposed to. So still have line that place has a line i've got most of it out but this is just folded in force and i should have enough to there we need to block that up right there somewhere um i should have enough of this material to make the top and the bottom so um the one thing about this material is that it does it's very stretchy it's very um it's not a good beginner material to work with but you know i say that but it hides a lot of because of the way that it flows and drapes it will hide a lot of mistakes so don't be scared to try it just know that you're going to try it with something you know pajama pants or pajama shorts or oversized t-shirt that doesn't matter, you know, kind of thing. Um, when you're working with new materials, there are always things. I don't like for people to say, well, I made it and it doesn't fit right and blah, blah, blah. It's always to sleep in at that point. All right. So, and I've actually left this, um, the wide and it's the fold so that I'll have this nice piece because I have a waistband to make at the top. So I've got all my kinkles and crinkles out. I have pinned it down and now I'm going to cut it out. All right, so I've got them all cut out and I unpinned the pattern. So now I'm taking, and because they're all identical, doesn't matter which one you do, I am matching up. I'm going to put pretty sides together, okay, or right sides together, I guess some people would say. And then you're going to pin along this curve, which is the crotch of your garment. Okay. And we're going to do two of these. And one will become the front and one will become the back. And we'll match them up and do the rest of the seams. I always start with the crotch. Um, just my preference, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what order everybody else sews in. But... <laughs> I just start with the crotch and if I have different um like a front and back pattern that aren't pajama pants that are dress for work um I make sure to do front crotch and then back crotch and then put them together and so I will have my crotch put together very first and then the legs and that waistband will just line right up. So I've got lots of pins and this has just got a little curve. So 
Um, I actually like to start on the curve. And I'm just going to stitch right along that edge right there. Uh, but first, got to get the second one done because it also has to be pinned. And I tend to do pinning first, then sewing, pinning first, then sewing. And I don't always want to have to come back. So if I'm doing something that's mirror image like this, I make sure that I'm doing both of it at the same time. So um, it's easy to line up these points here and then just right on around there, put some pins in it. So all right. after this, I'll take it over the sewing machine and sew this and I'll be back to the table in a few minutes and show you what the next steps are. So I serge them together. I have my fronts and my backs. There's my front. And then I'll put it pretty side up. And then I've got my back. Now remember, these don't matter because I did them exactly the same. But if you were doing fronts and backs, you would want to make sure that you're lining these up properly. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're doing back to with backs and fronts with fronts. All right, so I've got my pretty ones together. And I literally take, and again, the crotch. So I'm going to take this. And I did mine on my serger. I don't recommend you do that if you pin it. Use your clips because a pin will break a needle on your serger super quick. Okay, so clips over here. So you're going to Line these up, and you're literally working on the inside leg, okay, or your inside of your thigh, and put those two seams on the same. Now, I like to lay my um, stitches one way or the other. So I like to lay one to one side, one to the other side, makes it so it's not so bold. Okay, so, and I'm very particular with that. And then, of course, I have my edges that go over that. So I've got my uh, crotch seam lined up. And now I'm literally just going to go down this and put me clips because I've decided I'm serging this and not using a sewing machine. It doesn't matter whether you serge it or you sew it or whatever. Just, I mean, duct tape it, just staple it for all. No, I'm teasing. Um, just get them together. Okay, so serger. Uh, sewing machine, whichever you prefer, is more than fine. And then you're just going to sew right down the inside legs. And then the last thing you have to do is sew the outside legs. So uh, once that's done, put your elastic in and you have it. It really is that simple. So Okay, getting down here to this last inside leg. Now, when I sew these, um, I attempt to make it one seam. So in other words, I start at the bottom of my pant on one side and go up and over the other side. That's why you want these um, pinned or clipped together because that's a lot of weight on your machine either way. Now I have a um, serger that has the little table on it. It takes tougher things. All you want to do is make sure that your table that you're working on has enough space um, and then you're good to go. I tend to put a lot of clips on here because this is stretchy. Again, it's, you know, stretchy material. And I've done all down one side. I still have the other side to clip. And then I will run that seam up and my crotch will be together and then I'll do the two sides. Super, super simple. And we've already conquered the only curve in it. The rest of it is pretty much straight. You can pull this straight while you're doing it. Don't pull. You can guide it straight because you're coming up and it's not even going to feel like much of a turn. Um, although it is. Uh, but other than that, 
it's not like a 90 degree angle or anything like that. Once you get these pinned together and you're sewing, it will seem just like a straight edge. You're just going to guide it as if it were. It, it's a short little curve, nothing major, nothing to panic about, and it's definitely not going in circles. So it'll be good. I'm going to finish pinning this, get it stitched together, and I'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, so the next step is to put our outside edges together. As you can see, I've got mine all flipped. They're starting to look like pants. Um, yeah. So again, these are pajama pants. They don't have to be perfect fit. So we're not fussing with that or anything. We go to the machine, search down the sides, and then all we have to do is make the casing for the elastic and hem the bodies. Okay, so I have all of my things. I do have to weave in my ends in that, but that's just a server thing. You don't have to do that if you back up and start and lock your things, but a serger doesn't do that, so um, I like to take my needle and weave mine in. So, the only thing I have left to do is literally fold this down, sew it across, put my elastic in. All right, and we're going to do that same way that we did the bags with one exception. Sorry, speaking. Um, I'm literally going to measure down, and then I'm going to leave an, a small opening, and then I, that's where I'm going to insert my elastic, run it around, sew the elastic, and then sew across there, and I will have pants. But just for video's sake, here is my, and I love doing this because you work on the wrong side so long that you forget what it's going to look like. Straight pants. Oh, forgot where the camera was. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my trim in there, and then I'll show you how I hem things. Not necessarily conventional, but then again, I just do it for me. So I'm not making a business of this. I'm just making my own clothes. And if anybody is inspecting them that closely, they need to back off. They've gotten in my personal space. So, all right, I'm gonna go along. I am going to fold this down, clip it. I'm actually going to pin it because it's easier and I will be doing this stitch because I don't want to um, undo my serger. I can take it down to a top stitch, but that means undoing one of the threads and I don't want to. So uh, I will be just freehanding this on the sewing machine. And a lot of times I just eyeball it, but you can measure from the top and use a ruler and then put a pin everywhere that you want it, you know, if you want to. I don't get that exact with it because, like I said, these are pajama pants and they're just going to be made for comfy. Okay, so one of the quick little cheats, as I call it, if you need to make this super straight, um, you're going to take this at the top. You can measure down one inch, two inch, whatever your thing is. Make sure that you've got that much down and do it on the seams. So this one I have an inch and a half. And then I go straight to the next seam. Just leave it. Go to the next seam, an inch and a half. Go to the next seam. And the seams you can line up straight. <laughs> inch and a half. And then an inch and a half. So I've got my four seams all at an inch and a half. Then I'm going to take and uh, I do one in the center. And this is if I'm really trying to make it just perfectly even. Okay. So I would put this here about the center. Take it to an inch and a half. Which a lot of times it will come close just because you've got an inch and a half and an inch and a half here and when you pull it up like this you know it just generally goes to an inch and a half but sometimes you'll have to adjust a little bit and then again go around each one and if at some point you need more pins than this uh, then you do the same thing just repeating in between the centers 
of where the pins are. Now, this is all the pins I'm going to put in this so that I can go get my uh, pocket dog. But, or I guess my elastic strap. But you can actually get them pretty even just by measuring at the seams and the center line. They, they normally come up pretty close. So there's those, there's those. All right, now, if you remember, uh, all of this is the same, okay? So I used four pieces the same. There is no front, no back. So now is the time to decide what I want to be front, what I want to be back. Um, because I have to leave an opening for the elastic. And let's see, I just kind of decided which one I like the best. I think this one back here, the pink and the purple, is going to be my back. Okay, so I will leave this one open and I won't be sewing it. I'll start to the side of it and go all the way around and stop before I get to where I started. So I'm going to take this to the machine, sew it up, and I'll be back. Okay, so I've got my waistband all turned. Now, I didn't turn it under and turn it under because this is just t-shirt material and it's not going to fray. I used the raw edge on there that came from the manufacturer. These are pajama pants. I don't have to be exact with them and I still will be fine for being seen in them. If that makes sense. I will be more than happy to be seen in them because they'll be decent, but they won't be perfect. Um, now, your first instinct is to go ahead and put the elastic in these. Do not do it. You will regret it. Okay? So, the next thing that we're going to do is hem them. Uh, I happen to know that my outer leg height is 42 inches and my inseam is 30 inches. Okay? That's how I like my clothes to fit. So, I am literally going to uh, measure from the top of this, top of my casing for my elastic, down and on the outer side it's going to measure 42 and the inner from the crotch where it joins, okay, this is going to measure 30. Now why wouldn't I just go ahead and put the elastic in there? If you have ever tried to work with an elastic waistband, you will know why. It will not lay flat, and you cannot get an accurate uh, measurement with it in there. So the last thing we will be doing is running the elastic. We actually are going to hem first, then run the elastic, just because it's easier. And I still do this in making all of my pants, just so you know. Um, it, I say it's a quick tip for beginners, but I do it in every pair of pants that I make. So I'm actually just going to get the yardstick. And I'm going to put my pants down here. And I'm going to measure it out. Now, if you remember, I didn't cut these, um, I guess the perfect length. I was, I'm doing kind of capri ones. So, while well, 30 and 42 is perfect for my pair of pants, this one is not going to be 30 and 42, but I do want it to be even. So, if I want it to be perfect. Which, I'm not shooting for perfect, okay? I'm just shooting for pajama pants. I want some nice, comfy pajama pants that I can be seen in public in. So right here is 36. I'll flip this up, and it looks like it comes back to 29 and a half. So that gives me... Forty-two and a half inches. Um, well, I could make them my forty inches. Okay, so I'm gonna take off two and a half inches, and here's where the hem part gets fun because 
I am literally going to roll this up and I am only going to make one seam at two and a half inches and you will see why. And I'm only going to do two inches. Okay, so I know at this seam I need that two inches, so 34. And this will be seamed right. You, you just got to trust me on this. Okay, so I'm going to make my first pins here. Okay, so there's my 40 inches. Now I know that I need 30 inches here. So once again, I'm going to lay it out. You'll have to measure your inseam. I measured it off my favorite pair of pants. Um, I always wanted it to fit at the length that that pair of pants did. So I measured it off of the pair of pants. So 30 inches here. Oh, looky there. I just have to take up like half an inch. That ain't bad. So half an inch. I'm just going to come over here. And kind of eyeball it, and then just make sure. Yeah, there we go. Um, and that right there. So you always want to pin where your final uh, measurement would be. Okay. Plus about a quarter of an inch if you want. But these, I'm not looking for them to be perfect. Now, when I do this, looky there. It comes right out, and it's good. And we're going to take, and we're going to pin along that seam. Okay. Now, second little trick is, we are going to pin along that, and then we are going to, we're going to do a very small pin, let's put it that way, and we are going to put our needle as close to the edge of that hole as we can, and once we do, we will then come back and tuck, cut everything off, and then tuck that little pin right up underneath that so um trust me when you when i say it, it will be nice clean no raw edges all that good stuff okay you just gotta trust me all right so i'm gonna go ahead and finish pinning all of these make sure you line up your lines your seam things and if if for some reason you want to try it on you can actually try it on at this uh, at this point and make sure that the hem is what you want, or if you want it shorter or longer, whatever, you can do that at this point after you get it all pinned. So I'm going to pin this. I probably will stick them on just to make sure that they're not too long, and then go from there. So I'm going to finish pinning this, and I'm going to make the first stitch, and then I'll be back to show you how to finish that hem off. Okay, so I've got it all pinned, but I wanted to show you one thing that I do. Um, when I'm doing, it, it's not so important with these pants, but when I'm doing uh, my work pants, because I, I definitely want those to be even, I will take this and I will bring it down. And then I will take this and I will lay it down. And I will then hold them exactly even hold it up like this and then I want to make sure that, that top is even and if you look that is almost perfect if I had that elastic in there it would be look at that so holding it by the bottoms that it's definitely coming up be the same length so now I will hem those and I'm going to hide hem it tight to the right I'll explain that here in a little bit when I get back from the sewing machine Okay, so I've got the first stitch of my seam in for my hem. Now, one of the things that I want you to know, <laughs> I do have a rolled hem foot, but I have yet to learn how to use it. So, I'm still doing it the way 
I was taught without any fancy foot. Uh, my sewing machine, as well as Tori's, who's going to be doing this, um, our needles move to the right and to the left in the zipper foot. We can do a straight stitch in the middle, left, or right, as long as we put the zipper foot on there. And it has the right um, switch on. So, when I'm hemming, the first time around, I do it tight to the right. This is where that up until now, you've been gauging all of your hem allowance off of the lines and gauges on your uh, machine. This is where you're going to gauge it off of the foot. This edge that you are sewing needs to be on the edge of the foot and your needle needs to be moved to the right. Tight to the right. Okay? Because now that I've got that first hem in, this looks horrible and this falls down and all that stuff. We are literally going to go in, trim this excess off, and give it just another turn. And it's going to look really professional. And it's easier than trying to hold three pieces all at once when you're starting. So, um, and with this material right here, it is so not like cotton. Your cotton stays in place. This doesn't. It stretches and knits. So I'm literally going to take and I'm going to trim this down. And just make sure that you don't cut the uh, stitches. That would be you know, kind of bad, but you're just going to cut it. It doesn't matter how close. It doesn't matter if it's cattywampus. Um, just trim off this extra because we are going to tuck it under at that hem. And you'll see how professional it really looks. It, it's pretty amazing. Uh, I never have really struggled with hems because of granny and her methods. So, um, I'm just cutting along here, and like I said, I'm just getting it close to that, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect because this raw edge is actually going to be rolled under, no one is going to see it, it's going to look like a professional edge, okay, unlike the elastic one that can be seen, <laughs> although all mine are surged, so, except for that one. Uh, and I'm coming right back around here to where it's thin. All right. Once I trim that off, I'm literally going to turn that hem under. And we're going to put it about the same distance. And we're going to repeat the process of pinning it. And it will come out and it'll look like a fancy little hem. So we're just going to, you're going to ignore how much ever's underneath there. You're just going to put that hem, turn it right under, and then take it back to the sewing machine, and you're going to hem it again. And your hem will be nice and clean. If for some reason you fold it and there's some sticking out, just use your scissors and trim it off. Um, it just means you didn't get close enough to your stitch. And when you're first starting, trust me, you don't get close enough to your stitch because you're scared of um, cutting the stitch. So, yeah, just going to go around it like this, and then you're going to go back around it with a straight stitch. And then it's all hemmed, and then we'll get the elastic in it, and I'm done. Okay, the last step is putting the elastic up that way. It's been hemmed up. Uh, looks really good. I like it. I try them on. They're light and airy and they breathe with me and oh my gosh, I'm in love with them and I haven't even finished them. All right, so now I found my back little hole. I am literally going to put my elastic through there. Um, now, these are pajama pants and I want them loose and not tight, okay? For my work pants, I tend to use nothing less than a one inch. And for these, I'm using a quarter inch. First off, it's what I have on hand. Second off, at work, I need my pants to stay in place. This does not give, it does not stretch as much. Whereas this, oh, 
it is really stretchy. So smaller, narrower, really stretchy, uh, wider, not so stretchy. I mean, it has give, but it doesn't stretch like this does. Um, so basically, I am going to put my uh, elastic in here. And I haven't even measured to see how big or how small I want the elastic. I'm literally going to run it through there, and then I'm going to decide, I'm going to put them on, tighten it where I want it, mark it, take it off, and go sew it. Um, because as you can see, this is really the end of the project. Everything's getting done. Everything's great. And I'm going to actually be wearing these to bed tonight. I can't wait. So, all right. Just pushing this through. All right. So I have my elastic through, and I will literally put these on this side where I want it. I will use this end to do about, I don't know, a half inch to an inch overlay. I will mark where I want it, or I actually will snip the elastic, and then I will seam the elastic up and down around couple of times and then I'm going to let it hide in here and then I'm going to make one seam across there so across the white waistband casing so that it all disappears and then these are done so Tori we want to see yours yeah you won't see me in my pajama pants but they're close enough to done you have to see what they look like yeah we're good so you won't see me in my pajama pants but Tori, we want to see you in your shorts, and if you make pajama pants, we better at least be able to see them like this. So, all right, get to work, get yours done.